This conference will now be recorded. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, February 13th. Weekly board meeting. It's available by uh, via go to meeting also. Uh, we have an agenda in front of us. We might have a chance to look over the agenda. If so, I'll have a motion to approve it. Move to approve. A motion is there a second? Second. Second. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Approve the minutes for February. I move to approve February 6th meeting and claims. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? Aye. Tony Attorney General discussion. <clears throat> Morning. <clears throat> Morning. Um, don't have anything specific to talk about. Uh, got an update on a situation or two. I'll probably email you about later this week. Um, other than that, uh, got some court hearings this morning. Shouldn't have to leave early, I don't think. It's been kind of a busy time it seems with uh, uh, the criminal and uh, court work. I don't know if it's any busier than it normally is or not. Maybe it just seems kind of like it at this particular time. But um, um, anyway, I don't have anything specific, but uh, happy to be email about those invoices. But yeah. we sent that out, so Let's see what happens. I will let you know as soon as if yeah, I hear anything. Very good. And I'll I'll bug them yeah, by phone too. I just always like to get something sent out in writing just so. We've got reference to on top. Like Brandon, I can't remember his last name. He was the sales guy or the. He's our point of contact for what we did and. I don't know his phone number's on that on string of email, but I can get that for you. He might be able to help with some of that. Yeah, I I think I saw it in there somewhere, but if I need it, I'll get okay. it from him. So. All right. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Looks good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Approve the sheriff's report for January. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I have uh, January fees for you of $1,764.45. I'll make a motion to approve. Sheriff, sure, sure. the a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? No? Ro roll call, Jim. Aye. Sydney. Aye. Mike. Aye. Mark. Aye. 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 Uh, one other item for you. I mentioned. Uh, Few months back about getting a sheriff's comp board comparison for you guys um essentially it's just for your information and how it looks across the state on sheriffs that have reported what their comp boards have done um for their office 23 is there and then um, 24 also shows not all the sheriff's report so you have what i have um from the association so um Whatever you want to do with it, just review it, I guess, for your own information. Very good. Talk about things again a year from now, I guess. So that's all I have, unless you have questions for me. Anything on the new inmates coming? Um, no, other than the sheriff uh, said I should know something this week. So I'll let you know. Perfect. You bet. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fine. Department head discussion. Just kind of deal with the bridge a little bit more and some of the other departments, Mitchell Soil and Water Conservation District, um, uh, Resource Conservation and Development Agencies, Watershed Management Authorities, Conservation Boards. What there's going on is there's a grant of 
availability to, and those entities would be the ones that would use it. It's for uh, installation of creek, river, and watershed signs on county roads, city streets, and trails. And they're awarding up to five to ten thousand dollars per county. That sounds good up front, but uh, I am nervous about them placing signs in our right away and then we're waiting around them, or in the future it becomes our our responsibility to change them because they're damaged or faded or whatever. So I would just use caution as far as applying for this, thinking that this is a wonderful thing. So I think based on the type of sign. I don't think because they're not regulatory signs in the way that reflectivity might not matter so much. Uh, I know we put some, I think years ago they had put some up, and I think the agreement we'll have is that we're not going to maintain them, we're not going to do anything with them. If they want them up there to be marking the rivers, that's great, but I don't think, as far as the UTC is concerned right now, that it's a specific requirement based on just that they're already doing a, a creek versus. That was the agreement before is that you can put them up if you want. We Road department, we're not going to take care of them. No. And I don't want something wrote into this grant that says all of a sudden <laughs> right. we're responsible for it. So yeah. I'll work with conservation. Okay. I'm saying that I just happened to notice that after Mike talked about that a few weeks ago, that in my driving around, a lot of if there are a sign on a gravel road, especially, um, it's right right on the bridge and there was i think there was only two maybe three but i'm telling you, every one of them was like this and i have a suspicion that the, the uh, combine head or something is a little bit wider today Are they and, object markers yeah, yeah. The, the vertical ones with the very tuck and no they were they the uh, it was um up by the little cedar area there's a couple of um it's not the what type of signs were bent over? It, well, it was a regular, what a uh, square sign that was on a steel pole. That um, what's that creek that runs up around there? The name of the river. The was creek. it the name of the creek sign? Yeah, it was bent. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like, and it, um, Burl, maybe Burl. Yeah, and, that one's labeled pretty good. And, yeah, and then and there because I went a couple of miles around just to see what was it, yeah. and they were. Every one of them was kind of now. It could be on the ditch that it's going, but to me, it's like maybe. It yeah, sometimes they'll you know they're not probably put in as well as our regular street signs. They might not have the base that keeps it from tipping. Plus, you get all that water coming off bridges and stuff, and it softens the soil. You get some wind. They start leaning over, but yeah. just another maintenance thing for us. Yeah, yeah I, that's. I just don't want the DNR to give us this money, and then all of a sudden someday they say we notice a bunch of our creek signs are bent over your department go out and straighten them up because that was part of the agreement well i don't want that kind of reflects the, the the street signage that's in the county it was all you know all the street signs put up with, put up with grant money for e911 and then uh you know later on the money's not there to start replacing signs at least that's what i'm understanding is there's not always enough money to replace all the street signs that are up in the rural area because it was all put up with a grant and then i don't know if the funding can keep up with the requirements to keep that stuff Visible, so I have something. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that there's going to be a claim that comes through, um, through the planning and zoning part of my departments. Um, I'm going to be buying a plaque for someone who has served or who had served on my commission board, um, for 38 years, and he actually just unfortunately passed away. So I'm going to be buying that plaque and sending it to his wife as a thank you for taking all of those years of his life and serving in judicial county. So yeah. just wanted to let you guys know that. Very good. Thank you. So, so that position is open now too? No, it's not. It's already, no, because um, this individual resigned and then we didn't refill that position because there was actually an even number of individuals. Mm -hmm. So we, instead of there being an odd number, either five or seven, there was only six. So he resigned and we did not refill that position because we wanted there to be an odd number. Okay. I think the board needs to approve that since they appoint the members. They get to either vote that. to or have five members oh. or to replace. I'm not Shouldn't sure. Shouldn't that have been discussed when we 
we filled the position with, that was or it. we took them off. Because I came in and I said that the A had resigned. And then that should have been done what, back what, then. Right? What you're saying is that it was a six person, <clears throat> excuse me, it was a six person position and you feel the board should probably say Since we're going to buy it. I tried checking into it, and if you appoint, then you guys kind of make those decisions. Okay. Whether it goes to five or you fail. You, you want to put that, that on an agenda for some time, and we'll just you decide want if we okay. want to yeah. go to five or not, and, yeah. or stay with the six. And then for next week, I'm going to send the agenda out on Thursday because we're closed on Monday for President's Day. Okay. So just one more thing. Oh, go ahead, Todd. Just going back to that. <clears throat> Amanda's thing. Does Amanda need to take it to her board to approve and then she brings it to our board and we approve? I don't know if that's that. I don't know. Aaron knows, but I think we do we do we approve do members. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would think it would be us myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. They could maybe give an input or whatever. But there was another person that wanted on there, right? That's correct. That you had talked to? For the commission? Yeah. Uh, that was for uh, um, that was the other one. That was to no. fill uh, for the, the, the Tony Meek. position, and you guys filled that with Bill Strike. Um, so that's why I'm saying if we were going to decide this, I guess it should have been done when we were appointing members to the board back then. Um, the I didn't think that there was any issue with mm -hmm. this person. With, with not filling this position because it was an even number and now it's gone down to an odd number so that way there's an equal quorum like we can reach a quorum easier we can <clears throat> excuse me we just have an agenda item and then just discuss okay. how we want to do that we'll, yeah. we'll take your recommendation for what you just said so I'm going to be buying that flat. Very good. That's, that sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. One thing I had. This is the slew bill. Uh, the chairman signs these. This has Mitchell Soil Water Conservation District. Their chair signs all these. That we sign all these. And it then ends up going to Amy. And Amy applies the, the uh, appropriate tax stuff. So, so what do we have to do? Sign this? That's or? the chair. The chair. the chair has to. Yeah, okay. that's why we're packing it. Mark's the chair. All right, I didn't know. I've never seen it before. Yeah, well, I marked the chair when I signed it last year. So. Okay. All of them? Yep. I think there's like 110 of them. Something like that. The governor yeah, was yeah. last year. Do you have a pen? Comfortable pen? Blue pen. Okay. That's no, what that's it. Anybody else? I don't uh, see anybody online. No. All right. Tony Engineer. Much discuss. I will be gone next Tuesday. I'll be available for the meeting. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that maybe we need to look at a little bit closer, and I, it's all Greek to me right now, was the whole change in what was it, House File 718. Um, I think there's a little bit of um, scuffle in the County Engineer's side of things with the uh, with the the rural basic transfer at minimum, the minimum 75%, and what that new bill does to the secondary road fund. Um, I haven't read through it all. I'm trying to, to process it. The, the engineers had sent it out maybe late last week, and I just got, I was looking at some emails today, and there's some spreadsheets to follow, but what it could do and what some counties are thinking they might run into, those of us who are at the 75% minimum transfer, We'll probably see this sooner rather than later where i don't know if the county can keep up with that 75 percent i'd have to read it. i don't want to say anything that's too out of whack but it, it could end up jeopardizing the fact that we might not be able to hit our 75 percent minimum required to get our road use tax money and then on top of that if the road use tax money um, whatever we don't get in our 75 percent levy or 75 percent of the levy is what we lose in road use tax fund which then gets dispersed to other counties who don't need it so while some counties, you know, they might be above that 75%, they're going to benefit more from those that can't meet that. And then the ones that can't meet it are going to get penalized. And then it also 
can affect our farm to market and how we whether we can use our farm to market money or not. So this whole thing is is going they're going to talk to the legislature a little bit more about it because I don't think they have these intended consequences of what happens to everything else. I think I think it, somebody went into this blindly thinking that they were trying, going to try to save the world and they made a lot of things happen that that aren't going to work for a lot of people. So. Uh, yeah, go ahead because you might have gotten more information. So is that like su that. statewide supervisors meeting and the uh, county supervisors spoke to this, and they're kind of a ur they're not kind of they are an urban county, so they don't have a huge amount of secondary roads. I mean, they have some, but they don't probably have the structures and the secondary roads like what we do. So their rural basic levy rate was, if I remember, I was you know we're at three nine three nine five per thousand. They were just, I think that's what it was, or below two. So they didn't, and basically what that levy rate was, was this, the percentage that they were transferring in to secondary roads. I don't know if they were at 75, I think they were above it. So what they were levying was the percent that they transferred into secondary roads. Well, what happened is this formula automatically knocked their levy rate down so this year they're going to be okay and they can still transfer at least the minimum amount of the secondary roads which is 75 percent but they're thinking that the formula hits them down again next year it's gonna it's gonna put them at a lever at a levy rate that they can't transfer even 75 percent into secondary roads which in turn means that they lose their regf the road use tax fund and money because you have to have a minimum of 75 percent to get road use tax um it's not a good deal so, yeah, so you explained I, it better yes yeah, so, so i'm not sure if it's going to play out for us or not but it's one right. of those things that uh this is they messed stuff up let's, when you let's, can't let's, hit 75 percent of secondary roads and still cover all the other real basic stuff that's when you're in trouble. yeah yeah like, like last year we had over 75 percent right yeah but that, 83 83 so we'll be okay yet yeah. Well, we're down to 75, we're 75 now, this year. so it doesn't, because, well, yeah, it's... Okay. But we're not locked in. What's that? We're not locked into 75 yet. No. We, um, so we still could change it. Well, you still got to consider how much you're going to be bringing in. And this is a forecasted thing where some people aren't going to see it until fiscal 27, fiscal 29 is when the whole thing is supposedly supposed to be enacted. With, this is this, the, the date. So some people are going to see issues earlier than that. Some people won't, but... I think it's just something we've got to keep an eye on well, um, to make sure we don't lose the, we should the road use tax money. We should stay above the 75 for something. To be well, safe. you have to be at least 75. Right. right. And but if you're so, higher, you're safe. But I think it's, it. I think it matters is what your main level levy, levy is also. Yeah. So, like like he had said, they weren't doing a 3.5. They were doing less than that, and that's where it would really hurt. If we're doing 3.95, then they didn't need that much money in right. the secondary road system. Right. So. It's just something to keep an eye on, but I thought I'd bring it to your attention that there is some stuff going on in the background of this whole, and obviously we know it affects more than secondary roads. It affects a lot more than just that, but it's making a mess of things. And we won't be cutting any funding. They're just going to disperse that money possibly from one county to a county. For the road use tax? Yeah, yeah, we would be getting less, but the road use tax money coming in is all the same, but if we can't use it, they're going to disperse it among all the other counties that can that are meeting the minimum requirement. Well, I would say we should try to get above that 75 well, percent, you know, to. We can raise it, but then our percentage carryover is going to be less. Right. See, you've got a whole balancing act. Yeah. How much, so you, you, as long as the balancing act works for now, it's great. But there might be a point where you don't have enough. We have a couple factors that we can move. Not saying this is what we do, but in the past couple of years, we've used money from local option to cover general basic, mm -hmm. not up that levy. We do have a few that can maybe go from rural basic to general basic, and then you might have to balance that way to allow the 75%. Right, so right. it's just right it's a shell game it. with money, yeah. but you got to be careful that you yeah. at least can bring enough in to, right. to do that. Otherwise, that's, that's what it says down there. Is it mm -hmm. just, it's just a moving around process to make all this work because you have to do it that way. But we're okay this year with the yeah. 75%. Yeah. Things are going to work. I out. think we'll be fine with the way we are. No. But I just wanted to give you a heads up that it could. You know, depending on what happens, yeah. and may, maybe things will change, and this whole bill will get changed. There was enough in that room that we're not happy. Yeah, that we I think it changed. 
They'll say that. I think there was a push to 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 try to give relief to people, and what it ends up happening is it makes things a little worse. Yeah. So that's all I've got for you. Thank you. Thank you. Approved reporter's monthly report for January. Board here is for eight thousand six hundred nineteen dollars and seventy cents. I will move to approve the monthly recorder's report. The motion is our second. I'll second. Motion second. Any discussion? Just got a quick. What was the dollar amount you said? Marker. Isn't that 8619 Yep. And 70 cents. And 70 okay. Cents. I, I heard it wrong. It's my fault. Okay. Yep. Any other discussion? Roll call. Todd. Aye. Okay. Jim. Aye. Sydney. Aye. Mike. Aye. Mark. Aye. Set public hearing for FY24 budget amendment. The like March 5th at 9 o'clock. For anyone wondering what the budget amendments for is for the medical examiner um, department, where we have like after today's claim, there's a bill in there for 100 bucks. We're at like 800 and some dollars for the rest of fiscal year, so that's what we're meant for. I also put in um, the additional revenue from the city school election um, that wasn't in the budget, so those are the only items. But, um, you said March 5th. March 5th at 9 o'clock. I'll make a motion to approve the budget amendment for March 5th at 9 a.m. I'll second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? Roll call, Mark. Aye. Mike. Aye. Sydney. Aye. Jim. Aye. Dad. Aye. Aye. Because discussion and possible action on City of Riceville subdivision tax abatement request. All right. All right, so I have a letter from the city of Riceville. You guys probably have received it and reviewed it. I'll just go ahead and read it. It's not very long. Um, Dear Mitchell County Board of Supervisors, the city of Riceville has an urban renewal plan in accordance with Chapter 403 of Iowa Code, where its creation is a necessary tool to encourage new economic growth that could bring both jobs and housing opportunities to our city. The Riceville City Council has considered entering into a development agreement with respect to the use of future incremental property tax revenues produced within the urban renewal area to rebate back the cost of public infrastructure related to a residential development known as OP's Backwoods Edition. The Carr Ullman LLC, the, de the developer, has requested that the city approve the use of incremental property tax revenues for a period of 15 fiscal years. The Iowa Code authorizes cities to commit to this type of project for 15 years only if such use is approved by the governing bodies of the affected county and the school district. Please consider this letter of support from the Riceville City Council to approve this project within the urban renewal area for a period of up to 15 fiscal years in connection with the OP's backwoods edition. If approved by all, a resolution will be asked of your board to be passed at a later date when the urban renewal plan is amended to include this project. Um, if um, the project is approved. Um, they will be working with Dorsey and Whitney and they will be doing all the legal work for the project. Um, uh, the same request has, the, but has been done previously. Um, it looks like in July of 2021, um, a Rock Ridge residential pro project was approved for the 15 years. Um, and I just also want to like clarify, this is like a rebate style type agreement. So you're not fronting any money um, to the developer. You're not issuing bonds. It's just basically like a rebate style agreement where you're basically rebating those property taxes back that were paid back to the developer, um, just a portion of them. Um, and that can be used towards public infrastructure. So like with this project, it would be like water, sewer, roads, and stuff like that. The uh, Dorsey and Whitney is also going to do a timeline for them and advise them as far as how, how to proceed with all of this. Yep, yep. And so in the Code of Iowa, there's several requirements that they have to follow. And so, um, 
Yes. Okay. Is it is it hundred percent of the tax? I know you said a portion of the tax. It's a portion of it. So the city of Riceville um, approved up to not to exceed two hundred fifty thousand okay. dollars. So public infrastructure, I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this helps the developer basically offset the cost so that they can keep, you know, their lots more reasonable to yeah. buyers. So when they get to the 250 threshold, then it's done? Right. Oh. Right. That's the most that they can yeah, have. So well. And it could be less depending on yeah. those incremental taxes. That depends on, depends on what gets built, how many years it takes. So yeah. About 215 for... Two hundred fifty thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they can do ten years on their own, but they want the extra five years. So that's correct. In our permission to be fifteen. Yep, that's correct. And there'll be a resolution. This is just more of a. This is kind of like the very beginning stage. Like they're looking for your support because they're not gonna go to the next step if they don't have your guys' support. It needs to be put in our renewal area, um, and then there's like seven or eight or nine requirements from the state from the court of iowa they'll need to be like a consultation meeting involving this you know the uh, schools you know that will be invited to attend and stuff like that this is the correct way to do it this is good this is a good thing mm -hmm. we have a motion to give a letter of support for riceville i'm going to approve the city of riceville subdivision tax abatement request okay motion is there a second I'll second that. Motion second. Any other discussion? Uh, Scott, uh, Mark, Hi. Jim, Hi. Mike. Hi. Thank you. Appoint uh, members to the Veterans Affairs Commission. Looks like we have uh, one person resigned and another person stepping forward. A name. Oh, John LaCosta, the uh, one that wants to come on, and Ed Parcel is resigning. Oh, I know. I'll make a motion to appoint John LaCosta to replace Ed Parcel, who has resigned. The motion is our second. I said, have a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, Mike. Aye. Jim. Aye. Mark. Aye. Ron. Aye. 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 Pass it. Uh, items of note, meetings attended. I went to the ISAC statewide supervisors meeting uh, last Thursday. A lot of discussion. I'll just go through some of this briefly, some of these house bills that. <laughs> There's a House Bill 608, and then there's some Senate bills also related to this having to do with eminent domain, and they basically are, if 90% of the people sign up for, uh, this has to do with the pipelines. sign up, then through a process, eminent domain can be started, but again, through a process, not just by heavy hand. Uh, they talked about juvenile detention and the unfunded funded mandates that are being applied to that, that counties have to uh, pay for, but are required to do through the juvenile detentions. They want that change. Uh, inmate medical coverage by Medicaid, uh, have Medicaid pay for some of these, these medical expenses that we have to pay for for our inmates in our facilities. The I will program which has to do with the outdoor recreational trust fund um, we tried to get that enacted last year by the uh, local option sales tax gimmick and uh, taking that over everybody's in favor of i will to be done but they don't want to be doing it through local option sales tax local option sales tax is for us to to use um, there's a bill about forest reserve uh, they don't see any legislation that will affect public health this year, maybe next year. No major changes to property tax through this year. Um, big discussion of what Rich talked about in regards to that formula. Um, 
supervisor district plans, one of the thoughts are to, there's three different plans. One is where supervisors are at large through the whole county. I think that's one. Plan two is you live in your district, but the whole county can vote on you. And number three is the way we have it, where you live in your district and your district votes on you. For some reason, they the, the legislature feels they need to change that, which is kind of strange that they have all these thoughts that they know what's best for us, whereas the taxpayers know what's best for a city or for a county. That's that's called local control. Anyway, they want to get rid of number two and force number two to uh, with the population to have to go into one or the other. They feel the need they need to manage us in another way. Um, there was a lot more going on than that, but it was a very good meeting and a, a lot of unhappy supervisors. At, and I'm not saying just a dozen. There was a lot. A couple hundred people there, a couple hundred supervisors, and not too many people were very happy. So, will that affect this county? No. No. Mm -hmm. I think it was a 60,000 population. I think it's 25,000. Then they also want to switch in there. If there's a supervisor vacancy, they want to require a special election instead of allowing to appoint and then turning the position. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then there's a comp board thing that if uh, one of the thoughts is to eliminate comp boards, another is that uh, how, how it would go is that any increases in pay and wages would be at the CPI or a maximum of 3%. That's it. Where, and ISAC is saying, well, you don't really need to overhaul the whole system again. What works for counties is working for counties. Maybe a better plan is to have the comp board when they meet and do things, do just like what the sheriff did, show your work. And that's how they put it. You know, comp board meets, don't just throw out a number and wonder how you got that number. Comp board has to show your work. How did you get that number? This is justify what you did. So that's ISAC's side of that. There's a lot more, but <clears throat> we'd be here all day like that meeting was. So, go ahead. Are you coming to a summit pipeline meeting last Thursday? I'm not sure how much we can talk about it. I want to put summit carbon pipeline meeting. And I had a here we go. And I had a public health meeting too. And, oh man, they went over all the wells and the water tests and the she had to do the postcards again this year for water tests. The septics went in last year more than ever has before. Uh, on the public health side, but the home health aids wages need to be raised, so I know they raised the starting wage and now they raise the wage for the current workforce of two dollars an hour just to, to keep up with nursing homes and stuff so that was approved and uh well they talked about the public health grants and expenses and revenue and everything's in order and pop the update and next meeting's april 12th uh, well, this committee uh, meeting, they're still pushing to get the physical done as soon as you can. And when you get your physical done, you get your name put in a hat and you pull out gift cards every month. So the sooner you get it in there, the better chance you have to get a gift card so we can get our better rates on our insurance next year, we hope. So that's all I have. Now, uh, I had a fair board meeting. Um, went over our committee list. Um, the rodeo was, uh, will be on Friday night. We'll be starting at 6.30. Um, no one received the contract for the uh, Saturday demolition derby. Um, let's go. Uh, 
there's they're uh, been talking about this for a few years. Um, they have room for five more camper hookups on the south end. It'll be one, then you'll cross the driveway and there'll be four more. I believe. Um, it's interesting that in the last year or two that people want to camp down there in the off, off season, you know, not just during the fair. They bring their horse trailers and um, they just, so they do rent them out. So they, they figure it was time to put those five in and then uh, they're, they're full during the fair. So there'll be, there might not be five more. They might be already taken by people that, you know, wanna, are not, we're not sure. But, um, so with that being done, um, they, they started receiving calls from food vendors all of a sudden for the fair. And, and we've been putting it out there that we could use more because, so, um, yeah, there's, I don't know, six, eight people that have called it, um, set up. So now they have more electrical. Yeah. So, but, uh, they have pretty much all drawn out where they're going to set these people. And so, uh, there's already, um, some electrical there they just need to add to and then um, uh, to be able to house those people it's the, the grounds right now it looks like it's going to be pretty full but that's a good thing that's a good it's a good thing so um and let's see oh um they bought a table for the egg breakfast um, so There'll be eight of them going at 6.30 on March 21st, which is a good thing to represent the um, fair out there. And then um, they found a different uh, person to do uh, wood carvings. Um, this individual, uh, her family was pretty interested in it from Garner, yeah, so we're going to hire him. So. Um, that was it. Manure yeah. management plan update? Um, one from Schroeder Hog Farm LLC, 3361 340th Street, Elma. Public comment. Uh, adjourn the meeting at 9.08.